Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Exploring opportunities for growth and investment starts with the East as the government of West Bengal kicks off another round of the Bengal Global Business Summit. West Bengal's influence in the East has been largely appreciated especially since the state is prominently known to be one of the most powerful gateways to East Asia. The state has also been known for its continuous economic growth and this is evidently seen through the rising prospects put forth at the Bengal Global Business Summit 2016. Inaugurating the events of the summit was the Honorable Chief Minister of West Bengal, Mamata Banerjee, who with her inspiring monologue reinforced the audience's faith about the state of West Bengal. In our democratic setup, the central and state, we believe that development, progress, prosperity and development for the country and if state develops, I believe the country developed also. It's a joint venture scheme. I'm very, very happy to welcome all of you. Bengal Global Business Summit 2016. Your presence and participation has made us proud. Thank you so much for coming over here. Yes, it is the time for Bengal. Bengal is performing. Now, Bengal is ahead in everywhere in the country, and especially in development parameters. And I want to tell you something, why Bengal is a destination nowadays. Sometimes the accountability depends on credibility. And our credentials is our credibility. And our transparency, our accountability is our credentials. The summit was also graced by the presence of the Prime Minister of Bhutan, Sharing Topge, who shared his insights about the emerging bond between India and Bhutan. The focus of this year's summit on startups, smart cities, growth of IT, financial hubs, skills and services, and MSMEs are of special interest to Bhutan as well. So I am here to listen and to learn about new and innovative ways of doing business in these areas. I am convinced that the ideas generated here will gain momentum and reverberate well beyond Bengal to also reach the high mountains of Bhutan. This summit is an excellent platform to not just showcase Bengal's potential but to understand the vast opportunities that lie in the entire region as well. Minister of Finance, Corporate Affairs and Information and Broadcasting, Arun Jaitley reinforced the idea of a powerful India through the unity of Indian states. The strength of India is its federal polity. The strength of India is that despite political differences, we cooperate for each other because there is a constitutional structure that binds the center and the state. West Bengal today contributes about 6 to 7 percent of India's national GDP. A strong West Bengal is going to enhance its contribution further to India's GDP. India grows if the states grow. And therefore, the government at the center has a vested interest in making sure that states like West Bengal grow. There is an additional factor. Conventionally, states to the eastern part of India haven't grown as rapidly as the states to the western part of India. States to the western part of India 
had achieved a reasonable growth rate and a reasonable base as far as the GDP is concerned. The enhanced 1 to 2 percent of India's GDP substantially has to now come from states to the eastern part of India. And that is why it is this region from East Uttar Pradesh to Bihar to West Bengal to the Northeast to Orissa where the potential for growth is going to be much higher and therefore we have to concentrate for growth in this region. The Bengal Global Business Summit saw some of India's biggest industrialists take the stage. Bringing his own ideas and views about a resurging state was the chairman of Reliance Industries, Mukesh Ambani. Events such as this are transformative moments in the history of a state. It is a platform to bring together all of us who have a stake in the development of the state. This event is not that of a chief minister meeting with industry or industry meeting with administration. The platform is to build a true partnership to serve all the people of West Bengal. And over the last four years, West Bengal has achieved significant all-around economic and social progress and is focused on improving the quality of life of its over 90 million citizens. People are very much excited. They know that the everything they are uh, trying to know about the West Bengal investment and uh, to start the startup uh, a business. So this is then this interest has been also inspired us as a banker. So we'll be get the future very good market in here. Come to Bengal, ride the growth. With this theme in place, the Bengal Global Business Summit opened avenues to a plethora of opportunities by focusing mainly on business possibilities, by implementing technology, policies, practice and strategic investment. Sessions were conducted with the aim to encourage investments in a range of areas, those with the capability of triggering a journey of growth and progress. On 8th of Jan 2015, it's when we started the warehouse in Calcutta, this is at uh, Salt Lake City, Sector 5 at Webel, at Mani Bhavan. So this is with the government and West Bengal's cooperation. So we've received a plug-and-play space from the government. And our role has been to provide the, be the subject matter expert and help build the ecosystem. So within Calcutta, to see how we can get startups engaged, you know, get some more startups out of the city. Uh, so we started off with the city, but I think in extending across to the region. So in this past one year, uh, really, uh, we've had about close to 200 startups come to us. So on our anniversary, I'm very proud to announce that, you know, out of the 200, we had about 23 startups who were incubated uh, in the warehouse. 13 of them are still there and about 10 of them graduated. And out of the 10, about five of them got kind of funded. As far as domestic arrival is concerned in Bengal, now we stand at uh, eighth position one position up then last year that was we were at ninth position now the twist football as far as domestic arrival is concerned is 4.9 crores it is 3.8 percent share of the total twist football of india so we have to improve upon a lot and the number one is tamil Nadu as far as domestic arrival is concerned that is 32.76 crores so they are having about 25 percent share for all india uh, figures and the foreign tourist football in Bengal stands at 2014 figure is 13.8 lakhs. So this is about 6.1% share of the total foreign footfalls. I have seen the summit growing from strength to strength. And what is very impressive is about the summit is its uh, action orientation. I think less of talking, more of working, more of actions. And example being this session which I have been panel on the panel of uh, the education, skills, health sector. Our concern is about improving the quality of education, getting more, school, uh, more students into secondary and high secondary education. Also, 
you would be wondering that where would be the uh, scope for uh, the private sector in education. Well, there is a big scope. Uh, there is a lot of demand for quality education for new age schools. Uh, I am happy to report that uh, there, ha there is very little regulation uh, for getting into making a school except for obtaining a NOC come recognition. The NOC is for affiliation to the various boards. Island FS is the largest conglomerate of financial services and infrastructure. We not only finance, we also set up and operate the large scale projects in the core infrastructure like power, roads, water, wastewater, marine and all that. We also finance, we are, a, we are sort of investment bank. And one common theme across our sector, our group is the social infrastructure in terms of education, skills, employability, clusters, lot of that stuff. So as Island of his group, we are committed to enhance our support to government of West Bengal in, uh, in development of new projects on public-private partnerships. PPP is one of our four strengths in various sectors. Also bring in investments on identified sectors. I have always maintained that the biggest problem with bureaucracy is that a bureaucrat, especially at the level of principal secretary like me, thinks himself to be an expert in the sector. Our objectives merge when we talk about growth and development, but our operations are very different because you as a true businessman, as a true, true, true vyapari, the profit margin is what you should aim at. You know, how much profit can I make by undertaking an activity? Whereas for government, there are issues like environment pollution, there are issues like labor, labor welfare, there are issues like fire and other safety measures, which for you is a big burden. Now, this is not, these rules, regulations have not come up overnight. There has a history to all of it. And unfortunately, we have not been as fast as we should be, or we should have been in changing these rules and making it more contemporary. In one sentence I can say all these fair trade practices are important for you for your own survival and government must appreciate the fact that doing business diligently, honestly is the norm today. It's not uh, uh, an, I would say, aberration. With the dawn of smart cities and the race towards being tagged as one, the government of West Bengal had also conducted a series of sessions to focus on the different focus sectors to bring into light the optimum utilization of advanced resources to avail better returns for the state and subsequently the nation in the long run. It's very important that the folks in Calcutta also understand that A, you know, the entrepreneur is created out of problems and I think we've seen a history <coughs> of issues and I see that, that the talent over here, which is a very intellect talent, kind of stepping up to build these solutions. So these solutions which they are building up, they need to be helped across. We need to get them connected so that they understand. We get some developers to, to look at what they are doing so that the solutions, the ideations can be moved to a prototype. Manpower, uh, intellectual property and the kind of people, the intelligence that is there in West Bengal is its greatest strength. The people are the greatest strength. Uh, 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 the uh, 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 the uh, resources that you have in terms of uh, capability for agriculture, capability for this thing and with so many other countries in the neighborhood, I think West Bengal has got a positional or a locational advantage also. Bengal has everything. It's like having all the ingredients. The recipe is there but there's no one to cook it because the, there's a big perception block which Bengal has over the years developed, which needs to be broken. And having such international class uh, seminars, conclaves, conference, makes a big difference. Uh, we had a lot of guests from the textile industry last uh, day, yesterday. We had a seminar who had come down from Bombay, Delhi and South. And they were all very, very pleasantly surprised. They are never expected. Aimed at being investment friendly, the Bengal Global Business Summit also focused on key issues around infrastructure and rural development. 
I would feel that uh, affordable housing um, and for uh, for most parts of India, uh, affordable housing is a very important big criteria. I think if we can train PPPs with the government to do affordable, large scale affordable housing, I think that would be very, very useful for West Bengal. I think it is very close to every government's hub. And uh, without public sector, without private sector participation in affordable housing, that seems difficult. We have tied up, Tata Valley Home has tied up two very large projects. Um, we, we will both of them about 10,000 homes uh, with uh, mechanization and of course things. But we are facing teething troubles in starting to get them off the ground and uh, uh, these are in, um, in two different parts of the city. So I would think that if we can get that going, uh, that, that will bring in a large number of things. LHB itself is uh, very proactive. Um, and there are so many developers in the city with whom you would like to collaborate to do both a large format and affordable housing as well as premium and uh, other kind of things. So, something I would hope that that's something that we can do. I would say that, uh, you know, the, the state should be very focused on attracting the very, very big companies here. You know, so, you know, today when you look at companies like IBM and Accenture, they've got over 50% of their workforce in India. And when companies like that come and they in a big way, it creates an enormous ecosystem around it. The suppliers come, the vendors come. And so, you know, I think I think you start there, right? I think you have to go be very laser focused on who are the biggest companies uh, and how are they growing and how can they come here. India grows if its states grow. A summit of such grandeur would not have been complete without the signing of MOUs between different organizations. First ever private greenfield airport in India. In the bid to catapult West Bengal as a powerful gateway, not only in the east but across the nation, several associations were formed. Those who were keen on making West Bengal an influential economic, technological hub of the country. With the aim to attain long-term growth, the government of West Bengal, through the Bengal Global Business Summit, secured a massive funding for investment opportunities. This will not only boost West Bengal's position on the map, but will also make it a key player in contributing to India's growth. There has been a resurgence in the thought process. And uh, the, the under the leadership of the current... Um, Chief Minister and uh, there is a new vision and a new thought process that is emerging in Bengal which has resulted in a phenomenal amount of growth. You must have seen all the statistics that has uh, been uh, there for the last five years and I think um, uh, going forward Bengal will be a place for people to actually invest and work with because what Hong Kong would, is to China, Bengal would be to the entire Northeast, uh, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Bengal will become a hub for the entire region and therefore Bengal has a tremendous potential for not only people, businesses from within India but from outside India because this will become the future hub to support the entire region. We are in for good times in West Bengal. Uh, there is a, uh, I mean the eastern region of the country has always lagged behind in terms of growth over a period of time. But then uh, uh, the demographics and uh, everything is conducive. The only thing is we need to continue to make business easy to do. And we need to continue to, uh, you know, attract uh, industry and industrialists. Uh, 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 I mean, Bengal has uh, 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 had a, a very good history at one point of time. And, but the industry is now, you know, uh, practically disappeared in the interim period about three decades ago. And now again it's coming back to the front.